Hey everyone, so my presentation for today is going to be about music and ADHD and how they're related to each other and how music therapy can help patients with ADHD. So to make this presentation a little bit more entertaining and fun, I've decided to include my own personal story along the way um, and explain the concepts through my story. So let's begin by talking a little bit more about my story. So I divided it into four parts. Um, once I was three years old as a preteen, teen and adult, which is now. Um, so at three years old, I realized that I had a connection with music. I would listen to music and just move to it. It was an automatic response that I had no control over whatsoever. Um, and my parents were interested to know more. And so they just kept on playing more songs and more music. And I just related to it. Then as a preteen, um, I was dealing with anxiety and a lot of pressure from society and my school and friends. So music sort of helped me calm my anxiety and feel safe. Um, then as a teenager, it helped me express my emotions through dance, basically. So I was dancing my emotions out and it really helped me connect with my surroundings and myself. And then finally, as an adult, um, music really helped me through my own mental disorders and issues and it was a form of therapy that made me feel safe and grounded so now before we move on uh i would like to explain the definition of adhd according to the american psychiatric association um which is a really well-known organization um adhd which stands for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a prominent neurobehavioral disorder in childhood and, ad and adolescence that features inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. So it's just another disorder that comes with, um, that can come with other disorders and coexist with them, or it can be on its own. Um, it has multiple causes. Some of them are, um, according to Heal 2001 and Castellanos 2002, uh, and other well-known scientists that low birth weight, head trauma, and uh, genetics or genetic factors also appear to be associated with symptoms of ADHD. Now we're moving on to the outcomes of ADHD. So what the results can be if someone has ADHD. So the ADHD um, is mainly associated with impairments across a range of domains. Uh, for instance, academic underachievement, family problems, uh, peer relationship problems, anti being antisocial, um, or Delinquent activity could all be traced to ADHD. And then on a long term, ADHD can lead the individual affected to an increased risk of substance abuse, uh, decreased vocational opportunities, and an increase in criminal activities. And at the same time, it can have other negative results, which I've already mentioned before. ADHD is often comorbid with other disorders such as depression, anxiety, um, insomnia, uh, ODD, conduct disorder, as well as depression and anxiety. I think I've already mentioned that one. Now we're moving on to the music part of it. How is music related to it? So music is an interesting part of human existence in terms of responses, um, such as like pulse, rhythm, breathing, movement, the whole range of emotions, basically. These connections with music remain despite the disability. So music therapy use, uh, music therapists use such a tool to help individuals with a variety of needs arising from learning disabilities, mental or physical illnesses, physical or sexual abuse, and stress and terminal illness. Now there's a few approaches to music therapy. Uh, the first being the active mode and receptive technique. So the active is basically free improv where the patient improvises their own music. And then the receptive one is when the patient needs a higher level of structuring, which is how much direction is given to them by a therapist. Um, so the receptive technique is based on pre-composed music for the purpose of relaxation. So that was what I did when I was a teenager. I would listen to pre-composed music uh, and try sometimes to improvise just to calm down and relax. So um, now we're moving on to how it helps. Music really helps uh, provide structure. So music is rhythm, and then rhythm is structure. 
and structure is soothing for a brain that has been struggling to re regulate itself to stay on a linear path, uh, which is anyone with ADHD would struggle to stay focused, to stay stable. So uh, according to Kristen Hutchinson, a professional music therapist, music ex exists in time with a clear beginning, middle and end. That structure helps a child with ADHD plan and then anticipate and then finally react. So, and then the second uh, benefit is music fires up synapses. So individuals with ADHD tend to have lower levels of, uh, of do dopamine in their brains that is regulated by pleasurable music and then um, enables the brain to produce extra dopamine. Students participate in an orchestra, for example, to learn how to listen, uh, take turns, anticipate changes, and then finally pick up on cues. It proves to the children that all voices are necessary. Uh, and then music also helps children kind of socialize in a sense. That's when they participate in like an orchestra um, so they can be social. Now, finally, I wanna talk a little bit about my experience. So the way ADHD, I mean, the way music has helped me with my own condition is that it, help decrease the frequency of mal maladaptive behaviors because of my ADHD, reduce other mental health conditions that coexist with it, uh, and provided me with a safe space, structuring and socially, with a safe, um, a safe structuring and socially acceptable environment where I can express my feelings without feeling any sort of anxiety. Um, so music and ADHD are really related, uh, music therapy and ADHD are really related on that level where they can uh, work together to provide the patient with a better environment to excel in any field. Now, finally moving to the conclusion, I decided to include kind of like a discussion and a question and advice for the people who are willing to look for dance after music therapy. So what if board certified music therapists are hard to come by in your city? or the cost of music therapy is too high. Some things we can do are, um, let's say turn on the TV, uh, turn off the TV, sorry. By turning on the TV, you're cutting off any distractions that a kid with ADHD might have and get them more focused on what, what's happening now, the present. The second step is setting a mood. Hearing songs of varying rhythms can slow down or speed up your child's mental and physical processes. So rhythm, melody, and tempo are all tools used to target non-musical behaviors, uh, to catapult change through the body. And a change in rhythm uh, can trigger a reaction in the brain. So like, let's say a kid's listening to music and they're like, oh, something's changed. I need to change, I need to pay attention. Or if it's a slower music, then they're like, oh wait, I need to calm down uh, and focus on what I'm doing, okay? Um, and then we can create a playlist for kids with ADHD. So let's say I wake up in the morning and I play the song for my kid. And then when it's time to eat, I'd play another song. So the kid would understand that at the time the song ends, I'm supposed to move on to my next task. So it helps uh, kind of like the multi-step processing when excessive function deficits may make it difficult. And then finally, we don't need to be critics of our children. So your child may insist that Metallica helps him study. You may prefer Bach but that doesn't mean he's wrong. Some children with sensory processing disorders prefer silence to music. Um, but many individuals with ADHD say that background rhythm and melody help them, help them, helps them to concentrate. Now what's playing through those headphones doesn't matter as much as its impact. If Eminem helps him focus, let him be. Um, and now finally, we're gonna watch a short, um, we're gonna watch a short video that I have prepared um, about a kid that went through music therapy. That effectively, this one's better. Look at that one. Is that one better? Yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness, we don't want that one either. If you don't want it, that's okay. We don't have to make music together today. Tegan can listen. When they're at the hospital here, it can be very stressful. It can be intervention after intervention, treatment after treatment, you know, actually having to face your stress or face your anxiety or face your face mortality, face sadness, face grief, whatever that unlocks, 
music can help to process some of those emotions, those thoughts, feelings physically even. I think the misnomer is that, oh, that must be so much fun. And it always isn't. Sometimes it's very evocative, very emotional, very expressive. So what do you think? You want to start with the bongos? And that can help patients and families work through difficult emotions and express difficulties and challenges. And you let me know when you are done, okay? All right, so if you can see in this video, it showed us that music therapists are generally very flexible with their patients, so they don't pressure them to do anything. Um, instead, they let them do whatever they want. At the end of the day, music therapy is a form of therapy, so they should feel better and not feel pressured to do things. And by uh, being flexible with the patients, patients are then flexible with those helping them. So they're not merely obeying them, but in a sense, they're also interacting with them and putting their own um, touch to their healing process. And thank you.